set it and put it right here. I'll put it right up here. Why am I going to put it No, no, don't put it there. Ooh. I'm just testing something. I'm radioactive. Get really close. Put your, put your, neck, your neck close to it. Don't let your face get by the camera. There, that's close enough. Don't let your face get in. Hello, folks. This is Tom from anti-proton.com, and this is a short video, but I wanted to show you. It's about technetium-99, a radioactive isotope used for uh, medical purposes, often for uh, checking the heart and other conditions. I believe it's also used for thyroids as well. My father-in-law just recently got treated with technetium-99. When I say recently, I mean 11 o'clock a.m. this morning, and right now it is, um, let's see, it is almost 11 o'clock, so let's just say about 12 hours ago. Technetium-99 has a half-life of about 6 hours, so he has about 25% of it left in him at this point, and that's dwindling. When I tested him a little while ago, he was about 40% or so, give or take. Anyway, here's the spectrum, and let me show it to you. Let me expand the spectrum a little bit so you can see it. There we go. Oops. This is the spectrum I got from the Technetium-99. You might have seen the, the person in the video that was at the very beginning of this. That, that was actually a friend of mine that uh, had uh, uh, the same type of treatment done, but I used a Geiger counter from that uh, to show that, like, I don't know, a year plus ago, a while ago. Anyway, take a peek at this. I'm off a little bit of my calibration because I, I couldn't take my good calibration sources with me to his house to test. You know, you don't want to drive your car with a bunch of that stuff in it. So I had to bring a tiny little calibration source, and I could barely calibrate correctly. So I've had to make a little bit of allowances for the fact I was off. Also, he was so radioactive that I could not actually calibrate the machine correctly because I couldn't see the low-end peak from cesium-137. It was drowned out by him. As you can see right here, the... Um Geiger counter goes up as it goes near him. It's quite impressive how radioactive he is. 48,000 counts per minute at contact. There goes the battery light. Amazing. Amazing! So this is off a little bit. See this peak right here registers as 150 kilo electron volts in my machine. The reality is it should be 140 kilo electron volts. The peak for technetium 99M. And that's alright. It's only off by 10 kilo electron volts, which isn't bad considering what I had to do to get the, uh, the um, calibration to come out to begin with. Now, as you can see there's almost nothing going down the list here. Almost nothing else. And the reason for that, of course, is because uh, this peak here drowns out everything else. If you pull the spectrum up really, really high, there are other things along here that would be in the background, but you can't see them because of the intensity of this peak. There's a secondary little peak down here at 14 kiloelectron volts, somewhere right around there, a little tiny nub of one. And uh, technetium-99 actually has something like that, too. Alrighty, as you can see, the, the hand is waving. Nearby the hand is a sodium iodide thallium dope detector with a copper x-ray shield in front of it. Following down the high voltage cables, you will see a spectrometer, specifically a uh, UCS-30, made by Spectrum Techniques. And as you can see, the activity light is solid because it is flashing too fast for the eye to perceive a difference. And as you can see right here, there is a spectrum forming from what is probably technetium-99. The calibration is slightly off. As you can see, we have 146,000 counts, 147,000 counts, 148,000 counts, and so on, and just that channel alone. Amazing! Technetium-99M puts out its primary energy at 140.51 keV. So that's, a, that's plus or minus about right. I'm off by 10 keV. No big deal. If you go back here to the this side of the spectrum, you, you're pretty close. But it has an intensity of 89%. But it also puts off two gammas at 18.37 and 18.25 at a, a 4 and 2%. Perhaps that's what these guys are. Because if I'm off by 10 
kV here and I'm off by maybe three here that's that's pretty close I had to do a um pretty interesting <laughs> pretty interesting calibration job on the fly to make this thing work also I had to pull my entire lab unit out and carry it in so when I get my polymaster 1703 m o one b then I won't have this problem anymore I can just carry it along with me but anyway what's this interesting so that's probably what that is this guess this is a mixture of my background probably right here um technetium 99 decays by um uh isomeric transition so basically put it it's calming down i guess that's the best way to put it it's emitting a gamma ray as, it, as the atom calms down because remember it's a metastable isomer and isomer means that it's the same as a normal uh, uh, as a normal regular isotope of technetium 99 but for the fact that it has some unique additional property to it in this case that the the atoms all out of whack it has been left in a highly energized state after it decays from molybdenum 99 so it decays most of the time 90 something percent uh, uh, that way down to just regular technetium. It also can detect through, uh, sorry, detect, it can also uh, decay through internal conversion. Now, let me get past this, for, that's 10% of the time. Let me get past this for a second and let me show you the videos I took in the house. Now, my father-in-law was very tired after his heart uh, condition. He had an actual uh, um, massive heart condition that had to be taken care of. So in respect for him, I didn't sit there and plug too much equipment up for him to him for too long, only for a short time. So here are my quick videos that I had to make. But uh, I'll show you some stats afterwards. Pretty amazing stuff. All right, now we've switched to multi-channel scaling mode, where every single gamma uh, or X-ray that's detected by the apparatus here will be logged in a 60-second interval going right across here. Actually, let's sit, set that to 30, no, set it to 20 seconds. Now let's set this so you can see it, and then we will start. And I don't know if you can see or not, but the dot is already over near a million. And now the dot is passing a million and headed towards God only knows how high. Good grief. The dot is rising. Wow, we're at 2.3 million counts in, tw in 2.3 million counts in 20 seconds. Wow, that's impressive. Amazing. Now let's look at the counts here that I detected off of him. Um, I had this in what's called uh, multi-channel scaling mode, and basically each one of these counts at the uh, each one of these channels at the bottom fills up with as many gammas as, as it can count until the timer runs out then it jumps to the next channel and then the next channel the next channel I had this set for 20 seconds per channel so um, it's kinda hard to see this let me see if I can zoom in there we go I zoomed in now we're looking at channel 0 to channel 32 I've zoomed in look carefully here at 20 seconds per channel we were filling up in the 2.3 million count range. Let me give you an approximation here. 2.380 million counts in 20 seconds for my detector. And that's not even calculating for the fact that I'm only picking up 10 or 15% of them. The straight up. That's 119,000 counts per second or 7.14 million counts per minute. Million counts per minute. All right. Now, um, Let's use a calculator here and just do a little bit of quick math. 740 million, did I get that right? How many zeros is that? 703? Yeah, that's right, 700, 7,140,000 counts per minute. And let's say on average I'm picking up 10%. My actual percentage of efficiency varies between um, maybe 8 and 20, 5 and 20, somewhere in there. It depends on the channel. But let's call it 10%. Or, which is not going to be too far off. So we'll divide this by 0 0.01. That actually produces a number of 71 million counts per minute. Divided by 60 comes out to. So he's he my 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 guess, my guess is that. Um, 
I uh, guess is that he's putting out somewhere around 1.19 megabecquerel. Probably more than that because my detector can't detect his whole body and I'm in no way, shape, or form taking into account 4 pi geometry even though this was pretty close to him or the linear coefficient of gammas through his body or any of that sort of stuff. So the reality is probably much higher than that. Um, obviously, it would take a while to figure it out. But, you know, that's what you get. Um, when I stood back from him and put the detector, I was about 2 or 3 meters away from him at this point and I put the detector down. I was still getting a pretty good amount. As you can see, I was getting 115,000 counts per minute on, uh, sorry, per 20 seconds on average. That's 5,750 counts per second. That's uh, about a third of a million counts per minute. That right there, if you look at it, this is actually like 5,000 counts per minute less than the maximum my Geiger counter can show. <laughs> so uh, yeah, the scintillator can go, but this could even this could even actually out outrun its ability to count that high. <laughs> there you go. In the end, it's hard to say how dangerous any procedure like this is. The danger of having a heart attack or not discovering something in your heart when other symptoms already arise is probably significantly greater than any long-term uh, effects of this kind of treatment. The danger, of course, might be what happens to people who are around you after you're exposed. That, of course, could be mitigated by informing the patient about what's happening to them and that sort of thing. It troubled me a little bit that he didn't actually know exactly what was put in him, and he wasn't given a card to carry around that, sa that says what was in him, nor was he given any paperwork that I can find whatsoever to say what was in him. Now, of course, that's second-hand information, third-hand information for me, so that doesn't really account for anything. But if that's actually true, that is sort of disturbing. You would think that they would say something. You know, dear madam or sir, we are going to be putting in 10 megabecquerels of technetium-99 or something like that. And of course, who knows what the actual amount was, and you'd have to explain to a patient in detail what that is. But it disturbs me that that's not done. I think it should be, regardless of whether we think this procedure is or is not safe, and that's totally up to you. But regardless of that, I think I've said regardless 50 times, but regardless, um, in the end, it's still an amazing thing to see in the wild, so to speak, and um, once I get my Polymaster 1703, I'm sure I will be able to find many more people walking around who have had medical treatments with radioisotopes. This has been Tom from anti-proton.com. Bye-bye.